hello everybody how are you guys doing now there's this tiktok that is going viral of this um caucasian gentleman asking black twitter what he should do with his sweet beautiful um newly adopted child's hair um and he's asking for people to just let him know from black tiktok um what to do with his baby's hair i'm gonna play that video for you all and then we're gonna talk I'm hoping to get this TikTok over to Black TikTok. Any Black parents, um, we have adopted a Black baby. Her name is Zoe, and I don't know what to do for her hair. Um, I have this little brush. I have something from Shea Moisture. Um, I really don't know what to use, so please, any uh, Black parents or anyone who knows what to do with Black children's hair, please help me in the comments. Thank you. Now, after he made this post, a lot of people was not here for it. So I'm going to play some of the reactions and then we're going to get into some things. So I want y'all to see what people are saying about him combing his baby here, their opinions about how he's carrying this entire situation. We're going to get into it. Listen, y'all, go watch that video in this entire. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't watch the whole video all the way through. Um, I just, I don't know. I saw that original video the man with the baby and for some reason some just didn't feel right some didn't look right some didn't feel right i don't know what the fuck it is it's i don't know it just didn't seem right to me but what i find so damn weird for lack of a better word is that a lot of these people that that adopt kids of other races and ethnicities cultures jump on social media to my oh i just adopted a black baby and how do you do her hair and how to, like why are y'all adopting kids and y'all are not even doing any kind of research or teaching yourself or learning anything about this baby's race or ethnicity or how to do with her hair or products for their skin or things that affect that baby you know I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. You know, it is what it is. This is fucking America. But there's something about that video of him holding her, the way he was brushing, the way he was brushing her head. I don't know. Some just didn't sit right with me with that. Y'all are going to think this is so mean, but I really don't care. It really blows my mind how white people can get on this platform and literally ask black people how to take care of of their kids like on some real shit it really just reminds me of slavery like black people were forced to take care of white people kids and probably didn't have not one fucking clue on how to take care of them white kids and guess what <gasps> they figured it the fuck out literally they figured it the fuck out and what really kills me is that throughout y'all whole process in adopting that baby because i'm adopted you at some point learned the sex of the baby, the race of the baby, X, Y, and Z. You learned all that at some point in the process and you didn't take that time, I don't know, to educate yourself. And then what also gets me is that a caseworker gave y'all that baby. A caseworker gave y'all that baby and y'all don't know how to take care of something as simple as the baby's hair okay i commented on that from my other page but then i got to thinking what the hell is black tiktok so i don't know if it was just me but that video was really really weird to me i don't know why but that video was weird and it was just a really weird video i don't know i just find it really performative when people such as him come on to platforms like tiktok or social media and ask for help on doing specific things that are revolved around the specific child that they adopted because 
what are we going to do to help you that YouTube can do to help you? I just don't understand. I just feel like you want everyone to know that you just went through the adoption process and now you have this baby and you're doing and now you're this baby's parent because I just don't see the reason of tell of asking us for help when you can literally pull out your laptop and type on that little laptop how do I style 4C, 4A, 4B, whatever hair like and the, and there's literally a tutorial I don't know I just feel like you wanted everyone to see this video and be like oh my goodness wow he he really he really he really wants to help he really cares like oh my goodness it's so sweet that you're being open and you want everyone to like that's what it just gives it just gives really performative when you could have just typed on to youtube and you would have had a 20 minute a 30 minute a 40 minute video that would have gave you a detailed tutorial rather than everyone stitching you and giving you a 60 second tutorial like I just it just feels very performative to me because I like I, I, I don't get it also like you why are you brushing this child's hair like she's a baby doll and she's looks like she's not even one years old yet she looks like she's about three months old you don't need to know how to style her hair at this at this stage so what do you that's that's another reason why it looks performative what are you what are you doing right now all she needs is water and oil in that hair not even oil just water and then the brush for real tiktok how to do her hair is insane if y'all don't know what happened this dude made a video aggressively brushing this baby's hair he literally was like i need this to reach black tiktok i have a black baby he just kept saying black blah 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 i'm not gonna lie that shit rubbed me the wrong way but everyone in the comments was so supportive giving him tips oh get the baby silk sheets get the baby a bonnet it's a fucking newborn like not only can he google this information and go on youtube baby got two strands of hair what do you expect him to do to her hair it's the fact that his follower account keeps going up like this is insane somebody go get that baby my mother instincts are tapping in i'm like i really want to go get that baby he even tried to make this little apology video talking about oh i was expecting the same answers my friend gave me. if your friends already told you what to do why did you feel the need to go on the internet if you weren't trying to exploit the baby i don't know man call cps call the fbi call the cia call somebody this kind of reminds me of that asian lady with the black husband who came on here crying begging black woman to teach her how to do her daughter's hair and i'm like i don't know this is so shady i feel like people are just doing this for money he deleted the video but he also has this other video of him aggressively moving the baby and i'm just so scared for her if she's a newborn she shouldn't be sitting up like that like i don't know man just don't cancel me just get this baby over anyways y'all let me know what y'all think in the Comment. now the video that she's talking about where he comes back and he basically you know pleads his case and lets us know that hey somebody already told him a lot of things but he just kind of wanted more you know input so that's why he was reaching out to black tiktok <laughs> somebody said what is black tiktok child i was a little you know perplexed myself what is black tiktok however he was reaching out because i guess his friends and their input it wasn't good enough okay so he wanted to figure out and find out more information so he reached out to you know black tiktok um and the videos that she's talking about where he was aggressively moving the baby i'm, I'm gonna put those clips in here hi um i posted a tiktok yesterday um with my beautiful baby zoe and i received a lot of positive feedback and a lot of help um, just to let you all know, uh, I just expected to get like 10 more people adding to what I've already been told um, by several of my friends as far as what to do for her hair. Um, I didn't, I can't even keep up with these notifications, but um, you know, it, there are some negative comments, but I have, I can't change anybody's mind. Um, the fact is that we only had two months to prepare um, for Zoe. We had no idea anything about her. We just got a call and um, we moved as quickly as we could and we didn't care anything about uh, anything. I mean, whatever she was, you know, we're gonna love her to the best of our abilities. So um, thank you for all the positive comments. Thank you to everyone. Um, I love my baby. I 
cry all the time. She's so beautiful. Uh, she's so sweet. She's very easy. And I just want to do my best to make sure I am doing the best by her that I possibly can. Yay! Yay! <laughs> you got it! You got it! Yay! Yay! Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was one of them people that followed him because I wanted to know more about the baby, know more about the situation. And I wanted updates on that baby because I don't know. It just something just really bothered me about how this man was parading this child just around. And I understand the adoption process. You really don't get that much information. You know, you early on, you just don't. They have to figure it all out and then you get more information. So I wasn't really too bothered as far as his lack of information is the performative stuff about coming on the internet that bothered me um and how aggressive or maybe he just doesn't know or he's never had a baby i'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt but how you know intense he was doing the baby's hair you know moving the baby's arms this is a newborn baby child take your time you ain't finna be pulling and pushing and just all aggressive with the damn child i, I didn't like that i wasn't okay with that part of it but i was trying to you know find out more information so apparently he is a personal stylist um he is also a lifestyle content creator um he says so i am not limited to just one thing this is um off of his page he said so i'm not limited to just one thing i believe each person has a full life with multiple in interests um and i am no exception so i share all of mine my followers look to me for financial advice design tips and tricks and shopping wealth and um health and wellness and travel as well as positive messages so he's not sticking to one thing everybody know if you're a lifestyle creator it's based off of your life so he's a free content creator just does you know moves anyway you know anything that he's interested in at the time um his husband is a realtor um so they do come from money and they are wealthy um and they will take good care of the child financially so that was kind of pleasing for me to know um and a lot of people were in the comments like well where is his black friend where is his black friend so i did a little bit of research and i found the well it's just one black friend child but he has a black friend and this is the black friend and i don't know if this is very clear but i'm just gonna speak on it he does he is a gay man um he is a gay male and he is in you know a relationship and you know me i'm, I'm cool with the gays and the lbtq plus community i love you know them and i'm okay with their sexuality or whatever you know they want to do i feel like love is love so i'm not too much you know pressed on the gay piece is just how he's carrying it and how aggressive he was kind of being with this child but i wanted to do a little bit more research so i went to his page and i just kind of like just scanned it because i wanted to see like the type of person that he was or see like is there anything that stood out that was a little bit like scary for me um and so I don't know just a few things right that i just necessarily kind of took notice of right i'm not gonna say it feared me or scared me but i just took notice of like a mental note now he made this post he said today marks 10 whole years completely clean and sober from alcohol and drugs it's nothing short of a miracle 10 years ago i was broken miserable with a giant hole in my soul i tried to fill it with all the worst things as it turns out all i needed was a little guidance and to be honest open-minded and willing let me be absolutely clear without the 12 step of aa and cma i wouldn't be here today i quite literally should be dead or in prison right now um and if that's not proof of a god however you understand god i don't know what is surrendering my life over to my god is what has made me into the perfectly imperfect person i am today i wish i could say it was all me but i'm not capable of that 
I'm capable of running my life into the ground without God. And I've proven that to myself over and over again. I keep my TDCJ ID on my um, bathroom mirror as a daily reminder of what it was like to be at the lowest point in my life and that I don't have to live that way ever again. If you or someone you know is struggling, I'm always here to talk. Now, he does have a past criminal history. I was trying to look that up. It's really hard getting that. However, I wasn't able to look it up. If y'all can, anybody like watching this video want to look it up, y'all can. But I, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find any criminal history. So it must be sealed or something. But I couldn't find it. However, um, this picture right here did not sit too well with me just because all of the friends have puppies and he has the one black baby. So that for me, that didn't sit right with me just because of how it looks. It just looks really funny and weird. He posted a similar picture, um, but that picture is him holding the baby and the dogs are on the ground. But the fact that all of your friends are holding their dogs like, you know, and then you're holding the baby. I don't know. It just didn't sit real well with me in my spirit. It didn't sizzle right in my spirit, but yeah, I just wanted to say that too. Now, I saw this GoFundMe he created for his sister. He says, hi, I'm Will. I'm fundraising for my sister. Um, and then he, you know, set, points out his sister's um, husband, his sister's daughter, his sister's son. And he said, in late November, um, Malachi, which is, I believe, the daughter, broke her knee and tore her ACL. And Caitlin had to quit her part-time job to stay home and take care of Malachi. Um, and this happened the week after she stopped receiving unemployment. Oh, she was receiving unemployment. Okay, <laughs> that was news. But yeah, so he continues. He says, when Malachi was injured and Caitlin was no longer working, they decided to take advantage of a a moratorium on electric company payments that was created during COVID-19 to help alleviate press, uh, pressure for people who were in a financial tough spot. Um, Malachi went back to school in February and the moratorium was up in March. Then it was time to pay back. The total was due in full or else lose power. Unfortunately, they had to lose power and move in with their eldest daughter, um, Hayden, who had her own place. Now, the father, um, when I say the father, not their father, but her, his sister's husband, um, was already struggling completing um, HVAC um, and appliance repair jobs due to nerve damage in his left hand and being unable to hold or use tools in that hand that he was working tire tirelessly to provide for his family so much so that he um, worked 10 days straight um, a few times with no days off and worked about, let's say, 12 to 15 hours each day. In April, during one of these 10-day stretches, he was in an unfortunate car accident and sustained several injuries, including three um, fractured Oh, child, vertebrae, vertebrae, um, two dislocated neck um, vertebrae and a dislocated hip. Um, this left him completely um, disabled and going to physical therapy um, at least three times a week. He also attempted attempts to work, but is unfortunately unable to complete jobs in a timely manner due to his injuries, which results in no work. Um, he has filed for disability, but this can be a very slow and long process. Caitlin has had a sudden onset of low um, hemoglobin, um, which will require transfusions for the rest of her life and has been unable to drive to the closest uh, place she can get them without any money. Um, without these transfusions, her heart is working overtime to pump what little bl um, red blood cells she has um, throughout her body and she oftentimes doesn't even have enough energy to get up out of bed um, let alone get a job and work 
ooh, this is a lot. Um, but he was able to help them in that situation um, and help create the GoFundMe and, you know, got an outpouring of love and support. So this is something that he's done. Um, I think that this kind of shows him to be a good person. So the people that have a lot of, you know, questions or doubts, I don't know if it soothes you about him having this baby because his intentions are good. Maybe he just needs a little bit more education um, to be able to handle the situation better. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt um, that, hey, you know, maybe he just does not know better or he just doesn't understand. Um, and, you know, in a lot of cases, unfortunately, a lot of um, Caucasian individuals are tone deaf and don't really get certain things, at least the way, um, you know, we of culture would, uh, meaning that our culture, our skin tone, how things could be offensive to African-American people. They sometimes don't understand, don't get it because their reality is a bit different. So I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt um, and say, hey, maybe you just don't know. And if you don't know, this is how you go about it um, as far as handling microaggressions and handling things, because you're going to have to be well diversed in getting certain things to be able to be able to like protect and, you know, have a, a African-American child, because there's a lot that black people go through overall. So you would have to educate yourself and it probably is going to be a learning process for him. But it seems like he has a good heart. Um, I would like to believe that he has a good heart. And I know like, you know, in this situation, it's very scary, especially how he's going about certain things but i want to believe he has a good heart and god is in the way um and i know that he has stated in several videos and things that he does have a relationship with god um so hopefully that is somebody or something that he leans on his relationship with god and god in general but yeah now the reason i'm just like weirded out about people adopting children or just adopting children in general is because there was this gay couple um who kind of ruined it for everybody to be honest um they adopted some children and they basically sold them into prostitution and are them i'm not going to get too deep into the story just because this video is not about that but that's what scares me and that's what you know has certain alarms inside of my heart when i see different things and even like african-american children being adopted into non like african-american households like just um white households and different things to where they don't have the intelligence or the background on african-american culture can be dangerous altogether you know you don't want people to just mishandle a child from a different culture or a different race just simply because of lack of education there's a lot of things that scare people about this entire situation i don't know but mr will um and his husband because it's not even just a gay couple they are married um is adopting this beautiful you know child zoe um and we just wish the best in this situation all we can do is pray and wish the child is being well taken care of and wish the best for everybody involved i am a little frightened and a little scared because we have heard you know the news and the internet have definitely had us all scared we hear different stories and crazy stories like this where the best outcome doesn't necessarily happen so we just have to wish for the best and most amazing outcome for this child because it is very scary um when you see somebody mishandle an innocent child because you know the child doesn't have you know any free will to say yes or no and just how everything looks and the fact that it's in texas in general because texas have been known to be very racist um very shady especially against black and african-american people so they don't necessarily you know vote like you know what i'm saying democrat and it seems like a lot of african-american people not all are democrats and a lot of uh african-american people have told stories of being you know definitely like triggered or mishandled or hurt in texas so it's like when you see texas you're like mm, because there's a lot of shady business always happening um on like in texas around texas texas in general you know so I'm just a little afraid about that part. And the fact that he went to the Internet with this, like, you know, it just is very performative, in my opinion. I just I don't know. I'm just scared about everything going wrong. I just pray that it all goes right. He does say that he has God in his heart. So we just pray that God directs him to do all of the right things, because there's a lot of the times where people, you know, use Christianity, Christianity and God to justify the things that they've done. And that's not OK. But I'm wishing for the best in this situation 
situation. I'm scared just like you all. I don't know. It could go good. It could go bad. It, you know, we just don't know. But I'm following him. I'm keeping an eye on, you know, things that he posts. If he says anything about the baby, I'm definitely like looking through that thoroughly because I'm not finna play, okay? point blank period it, it's not much that i can do but me being on this internet and just you know what i'm saying my eyes is on you mr will you better do right by that baby